It's been a record winter here for us this year. We've had so much snow. I haven't been able to get out and go detecting. I haven't been able to go on any adventures. So I've been thumbing through some of my backlogged footage looking for video clips that I could share with you guys. And I found this. On one of those hard drives was some footage from over a year ago when Mine Lab sent us to Virginia to assist a team of archaeologists on a dig site at James Madison's Montpelier estate. And if you're not familiar with James Madison, he's a pretty important dude as far as American history goes. You see, he was the one that drafted the Constitution of the United States of America and also the Bill of Rights. Anyway, Mind Lab paid the way under the condition that I produce a video explaining how metal detectors, metal detector, metal detectorists can play a key role in aiding these archies in finding new dig sites and, and how we can all play together in the same sandbox and get along. The only problem was when I got home and I started to review the footage, it was just a bunch of PowerPoints and people digging square nails and it was, it was the equivalent of watching paint dry on YouTube. None of the footage actually conveyed how significant each part of the puzzle was. It didn't portray that every nail, every button, every bullet was part of a brush stroke of a greater picture and that the picture wouldn't come together until the end of the project. So instead, I'm just going to talk about what I learned and we'll show you some highlight clips in between. The program was headed up by this guy, Dr. Matthew Reeves. Throughout the week we learned a ton of different things, but mostly how tedious it is to be an archaeologist and how every little thing has to be recorded and cataloged so that way you can analyze the data later. That's definitely something we as detector detectorists detect as detectorists should be doing more frequently. So that way we can share our information with the archaeologists and the rest of the world for that matter. As detectorists, we also had a chance to showcase some of our skill set, like how we look at the lay of the land and we can find where things used to be and we can hone in on areas of interest quickly. Believe it or not, to this day, one of the methods that archaeologists use to get to the epicenter of a site is to punch holes in the ground every 10 feet and then analyze the soil to see if there's anything in it. But in their defense, they're also utilizing some really cool high-end technology, things like ground penetrating radar and aerial spectrometers to hone in on these sites with more effectiveness. I think that one of the most heated topics that we had while we were in the company of the archaeologists was the fact that we as detectors, detect detectorists, we always feel like we're saving things when we dig them up from imminent doom and degradation under the ground being lost to time before anyone can learn from them or appreciate them. When in fact, after sitting down with the archaeologists, it's kind of exactly the opposite. Archaeologists, a lot of the times, when they get done excavating an item and recording its orientation and then photographing it and getting its GPS coordinates, they'll rebury that item and walk away from that site. And to me, that just seemed like it was just going to disappear to time and no one would ever be able to appreciate that item. But after sitting down with them, they actually explained that the reason why they do that is to preserve the item and that one of the things that's worse for the item is actually being exposed to air, oxidiz oxidizing. I'll put the, the reality of it is that we simply don't have enough manpower or funding to properly curate every item that comes out of the ground. So they are reburied to preserve them. Another benefit from reburying some of these items that they've excavated and recorded is that they think of 
archaeology as a constant timeline. Instead of when they pull the item up and they preserve it and they shelf it, that's not the end of the item. If they rebury the item in the same orientation that it was found, maybe someday later on in the in the distant future, we might have technology that can recreate scenes better than we can now. And that was kind of a cool thing to wrap your head around. Like maybe someday we'll have some sort of drones that like a robot picture will uh, I don't know. We also learned some of the best ways to preserve things that we have found and that not every metal is preserved in the same manner. It wasn't all just us learning from archaeologists though. They realized that we are on the front line of discovery and that we have a huge responsibility to protect and preserve some of these sites that we're finding. And part of that is just basically we got a network. We got a network with these guys. We had in-depth conversations about how metal detectors, metal, de metal detectorists, and archaeologists could work together to achieve common goals, and that maybe we need to develop a systematic approach for the people on the front line versus the people in the labs. We need to learn how to locate, excavate, analyze, record, and network. It's an acronym. Did I get that right? It's just crazy to think about how much history is here. Bag it and tag it, baby. Yay. Woo. This morning we were running a little bit late and we had to go meet up at the lab with everyone. And I'm driving there and I kind of glanced down and I'm like, TJ, are those my pants? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to wear daddy's pants. <laughs> so he gets a belt because the pants are obviously too large for him fails to recognize that they're not even his pants he put a, a belt on my pants <laughs> <laughs> you know i wish i could say that was done on purpose just to make you guys laugh oh that's <laughs> but so really awesome uncomfortable. all day long i heard how big my pants are on him I personally look towards England's portable antiquity laws, which if you're not familiar with those, look them up. It basically rewards both sides of the fence for making and reporting discoveries. It's brilliant, but I think that we could actually incorporate some of our modern day technology, things like GPS and cell phones and, you know, taking pictures in the field. I think we can incorporate all of that into a brand new system in, in America. My question to you is where do we start? How do we how do we move in that direction? If you're a detector, detect if you're a detectorist watching this, I encourage you to get in touch with some of your local archaeologists and share your finds, share your knowledge, and maybe you can assist them on a dig site. And if you're an archaeologist watching, conversely, be receptive and and invite metal detectorists detect metal detectorists to come out and assist you on dig sites and talk bridge that gap that currently exists so we can both cohabitate, cohab, coexist, co...